one perspective I'd like to explore comes back to this, this issue of the policing power and, and the role of the federal government. Chief Justice uh, Roberts' opinion uh, noted that the enumerated powers to tax and regulate uh, interstate commerce, quote, must be read carefully to avoid creating a general federal authority akin to the police power. This issue of taxing inactivity, to Chairman Camp uh, and uh, Chairman Tiberi's point, uh, is of great concern to me because of the issues that are raised on a much broader perspective in, uh, uh, from our federal system. Uh, and it also echoes the goals of the Founding Fathers, who during the early debate over the Constitution's meaning sought to limit, quote, the power of levying taxes, close quote, from becoming, quote, a distinct power, close quote, rather than one limited by other powers, in the words of Roger Sherman. Uh, the author of the Constitution, James Madison, echoed the same point that the taxing power was limited to the enumerated powers described in the rest of Article I, Section 8. There's been a lot of discussion about legal, uh, among legal scholars since the Supreme Court's ruling as to whether this limitation stands and the degree to which there's any limitation on the taxing power. I I'd like to invite the witnesses to provide their thoughts on this matter, but before going into that, since there's been so much talk about uh, the automotive industry and the purchase of cars, you know, we saw a very interesting overturning of uh, 100 years of commercial law with preferred creditors with the Chrysler and General Motors bailouts. I happen to live in a state where Ford and uh, Toyota uh, did not participate in that and have come out on the side of this uh, very successfully. The, the bigger question here is couldn't we, in fact, impose a, a, a penalty under these powers uh, that would uh, mandate the purchase of certain vehicles to benefit constituencies that help the executive branch, help a particular political party, uh, can drive the economic debate in a way that uh, removes the freedom of choice of the American people with these compulsions uh, uh, through increased or punitive taxation or what in effect is a form of police power. But I'd like to uh, have you comment, if you would, on what this means to the future of jurisprudence. I, I see this as a great hinge and turning point in what the Constitution is going to mean in the next hundred years. Uh, Mr. Casey. Uh, yeah, I think you raise very important issues, and, and I think it's important to make clear that the reason this decision is scary has nothing to do with health care. It has nothing to do with the amount of tax that people may or may not pay. The fact of the matter is this law was not passed as a tax. On the face of the law, it is not a tax. It does not use the language of tax. Congress, God knows, knows how to raise a tax when it wants to. There is a page and a half of findings in the law referencing the Commerce Clause. In order to uphold the law, because the court agreed that passing this under the Commerce Clause would indeed involve the creation of a federal police power, which is impermissible, uh, the court rewrote the law to create a tax. And that is what is so scary, first of all, because that's not what Congress meant to do, uh, and second of all, because in doing so, it suggested that the kinds of taxes Congress can pass are far broader than we ever thought before. Uh, Ms. Severino, you made a comment about